One of my favorite things to say to clients is you never have an issue until you have an issue, whether it's during a pandemic or just in normal times, whatever that means, right? But you never have an issue until you have an issue. And I'll tell you what, I travel to speak nationally, internationally on legal stuff for entrepreneurs all the time. Well, when we could travel, right? And inevitably, every time that I go to a conference, I'm speaking about contracts and liability and some of the things we're gonna learn in this. And oh man, I can't even tell you the multitude of times that people will come up to me after and say, hey Rachel, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Good to hear the info, but you know what? I've never had that problem. Someone's never stolen any of my brand visuals. Or, no, I just don't use contracts in my business because I haven't had a problem yet. Within a year, I almost always, they're in my inbox at the law firm asking for help. Happy to help y'all, but here's the thing. It is cheaper and easier to prevent issues than having to play clean up an aisle for later. And you know, one of the little silver linings, if you want to call it that, coming out of COVID is that so many business owners recognized they were not prepared. They were not prepared for liability protection. They were not prepared in their contracts or services or sales to their consumers. They were not prepared in case that they ended up getting sick or having to shut down. My name is Rachel Branke. I am a business consultant and intellectual property attorney for entrepreneurs. I absolutely love all the things legal, not just because I'm an attorney, but because I'm an entrepreneur just like you. I would rather spending time focused on my business and my family and my life and myself and the the goals and dreams that I have than having to deal with the legal stuff. Before we dig into all the legal specifics, I have to give my big disclaimer. Well, I am an attorney, I'm not your attorney, unless you want me to be and we can talk about that later. All the information in these videos are going to be specific to United States and they're only for general information. Because you're the CEO, you're the head, you are the thought leader in your company. You should know all the facets of it, including legal. This doesn't necessarily mean that I'm saying take this information and run with it and do it yourself, but you should be able to formulate a checklist by the end of this so that you can take it to local counsel to make sure you're doing the right steps. So just understand this is general information. It's pretty good for across the United States, but there might be specifics in your individual state that you wanna have checked out. Legal stuff is so important, being proactive, because it's not if you have an issue, it's going to be when. And I'm saying this to you as an entrepreneur just like you. Yeah, I'm a lawyer, but I also run non-legal businesses and I would rather be focused on those businesses and my family and doing hobbies and things I enjoy rather than having to spend a lot of time, money, and energy with a lawyer to clean it all up later. I promise you, it is cheaper to do it on the front end. So I invite you, dig into all of these, even if you think you have each of these sections on lockdown, listen to it anyways. I'll be throwing little nuggets out and either it will tell you, oh great, here's a change I can make, or it could reinforce and give you more confidence that, hey, I've done it right already. You can check that item off. Anytime that I work with entrepreneurs, I always start with what I call the legal triad. So whether you're brand new, you're gonna to need to be going through this, or you've been in it a while, use it as a recheck. It is three main tools that are going to protect you from liability in your business. No matter if you're service-based or product-based, virtual or brick and mortar, you want to have these things in place. It's gonna be your business entity that is set up separate from yourself, having business liability insurance, and utilizing the right legal contractual documents in your business. For the very first one, for business entity, I see this happen so often with entrepreneurs. Many of us are in industries where it is not regulated. You're not required to set up an entity like a lawyer or a CPA might be. You can simply set up a Facebook page, set up a website, and you're in business. When you do that, you're considered what's called a sole proprietorship. There is no division between you and your business. It's all together. There is no division between you and your business. It's all in one. Think of it like a bucket. You have one bucket. You put in your business assets and your personal assets. That is all together commingled. What does that mean for y'all? When there's a problem, that customer can come along, they can pick up that bucket, 
and they can touch both your personal and your business assets. What we're wanting to look for is being a business entity, creating at the state level either a limited liability company or a corporation. There are other structures available too. These are the main ones that I see that many solopreneurs or smaller entrepreneurs focus in on. So what do these do for you? Well, instead of one bucket, we have two buckets now. One bucket holds your personal assets, another bucket holds your business assets. Separate bucket liability protection. This isn't a be all and end all. You have to make sure you maintain the filings, you do all the corporate formalities that are required by the state and make sure you're not doing things to do what's called piercing the corporate veil. But for the most part, if an issue happens, all right, not if, when an issue happens, that customer can come along and what can they touch? Well, the goal is for them to only be able to touch the business assets. Well, if at all, we're gonna be going through the other legal triad tools here because we're gonna try to keep them from getting to touch anything. Because again, it's not if a problem happens, it's when. So make sure that you have the proper business entity formation done. Make sure that you maintain it. And also make sure that you are reevaluating as your business grows to see if that's what's best for you. I will identify here a word of caution. When you're going to do these filings, I highly recommend that you do not do them yourself unless you've got into a course or you have the other documents needed. Because here's one of the big downfalls. The government does provide the initial documents to get set up with them, but they don't provide additional documents such as operating agreements and bylaws, etc., that are required by many states in order to have that full two bucket liability protection structure set up, okay? So what happens that many entrepreneurs will go, oh, I'm gonna go sign up for my LLC. I did it, I'm good to go. That's not the be all and end all of it. You really need to ensure that you're checking off all the corporate formality boxes because when a problem happens, a savvy attorney on the other side could realize, hey, they don't have their operating agreement. They're not tying their contracts to that LLC. They're not doing X, Y, and Z. And that's a workaround to keep you guys from having liability protection. They work around it, go right to you, and can touch both personal and business asset buckets. My second big tip for this is please don't have a CPA make the decision for you on which to be. CPAs and accountants are absolutely wonderful. I have my own, I recommend them. They come into my courses and teach as well because I know enough on taxes to be dangerous. But I highly suggest that you have an attorney and a CPA work in tandem because CPAs are fantastic on the tax side of things, but they're not licensed to think about the liability aspects. So we wanna make sure that we have both working together. So that's just a little word to the wise to stick with having both on your team and in your corner to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your business formation up front. The second legal trial protection tool is maybe not so much legal, but it can come into play when legal issues arise, business liability insurance. This is ensuring that you're gonna be able to have an insurance policy to assist you when a problem happens so that they can help to resolve it for you. In fact, let me pause right here real quick. With this triad, typically looks like this, I want you to consider them more like hurdles between you and your customer who may have a problem, right? You may have done everything in the world right, but they just are unhappy or just life circumstances have outlined and they are unhappy and wanna come at you. These are these triad tools are gonna to try to be the hurdles before they can get to you. We start with business entity, then we're moving to business insurance, and then you know the last one on the outer is gonna be contracts, which we'll get into all of that here in a second. And just keep in mind, having business liability insurance is extremely important. Don't rely on homeowners or renters insurance because they often exclude business for liability and for equipment. And, but you wanna make sure that you have a good policy in place. And the third main tool that we want to have here are the proper legal contracts in place. Now, these may vary a little bit depending upon the industry or the business that you're doing. But for the most part, almost all of us are offering either products or services. So you want to have like a services agreement or a product sales agreement. It could be terms on a website, terms on your Etsy shop. Anything like that needs to have outlined to create the legal relationship with you and the customer 
It also helps to set expectations between you and the customer. It provides you some structure and uh, benefits that not having a contract does not. There's a common belief that, okay, a customer sues me, takes me to court, because it does happen all the time, that if I win, because you didn't do anything wrong, well, I'll get my attorney's fees paid. That's not the way it works. There's only two general ways that you're gonna get your attorney's fees. One, it's in a contract, such as a services agreement or product sales agreement, or two, they violated something in the statute. That's probably not gonna happen. More than likely, it's gonna be a breach of contract issue, whether you have a physical contract or not, and one of the only ways to get those attorney's fees paid for, because you didn't do anything wrong and you won, is to have it in an agreement. That's just one example to put in place. So make sure that we have these contractual documents. Now, more specifically, release of liability. is going to be something that your client, consumer, your customer, whatever it is you call them, if they are coming into your business or you you are working individually together, they're going to be signing. Typically, they are for very extreme, dangerous type of activities, skydiving and so forth. But COVID, it has really become super popular for almost all businesses, and I'm recommending it to my clients as well, to have one of these in place that the client is understanding. If they come into your place of business, they are assuming the risk of potentially getting COVID. No matter how much you work hard at it, they are assuming the risk of that and they're gonna waive any liability um, you know, pursuit that they could have against you. We have two more types of legal documents to go through. One, really quickly, is your website terms and privacy policy. They are going to govern the relationship between you and a website visitor in the privacy policy which is required by many states now and hopefully it'll be all soon is to be put into place to put the consumer on notice of how you're getting info whether it's by tracking them with Google Analytics they're filling out a form and what you're gonna do with that information how you store it and what information is stored we want to have that and the last major bucket of our legal documents is either have an intellectual property transfer document or a proper commercial licensing document Think, you go to get your headshots or marketing photos done. If the photographer retains the copyright, they're gonna need a license to you, the commercial use of those photos. If you wanna own the copyright of those photographs, then that's where the intellectual property transfer document would come into play. Now keep in mind, I threw in a couple extra contracts on here for you. When it comes to the legal triad itself, business entity of LLC or corporation, typically, business liability insurance, the major one for the third part of the triad is the services or purchase agreement. So make sure that you have those three on lock because so many business owners during COVID realized they didn't have any of that. They were scrambling to get it done and luckily many of them hadn't had issues yet. So if you're someone that needs to get it done, make that a priority to get taken care of because we don't know how long COVID is going to be and even if COVID disappeared tomorrow, it's a very important important legal thing that you need to have in place. I know that felt like a lot of information. I get it. It can be overwhelming. I hope that you guys have a really good solid checklist so that you can go back through and do these items. Now, keep in mind, this isn't the be all and end all of what you need to do. This is a good little tip of the iceberg, but there are a lot of other steps that entrepreneurs need to take to protect themselves. I get it, it's overwhelming, but you're smart. You're in business for a reason. You have all this time, money, and energy invested do the things to ensure that you can prevent issues and be set up if problems ever happen. Again, not if, it's gonna be when at some point. And I want you to be able to have it in your corner all the legal protection so it can be resolved quickly so you can get back to doing what you do best. Whatever it is that your business is, the purpose that you're set out for, Legal is just a little part to help you to get there, to keep making an impact on this world and fulfilling your purpose so that you can create your real business so you can live the real life that you want to live. My name is Rachel Branke. You can find out more information on legal education for entrepreneurs at rachelbranke.com. We've got courses, downloads, free resources, videos weekly. So come check it out. I can't wait to help all of you. And best of luck. Don't stress. Y'all got this.